Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Impact Books. Today we are reviewing a book that grabbed a hold of my brain and absolutely refused to let go. It's called Disrupt You by Jay Samet. Jay is a serial entrepreneur who's not only proven that he's good at disrupting himself, he's good at disrupting entire industries. His career really has been all over the map in the best way possible. He's founded his own companies, been a software publisher, worked with companies like LinkedIn and eBay pre-IPO to help them grow, and he's held senior management roles at Sony and Universal Pictures. What I loved about the breadth of experience is that it lends what he says in the book a ton of credence because you know he's been there and done that, and his message really is quite simple. There is a ton of opportunity for you to capitalize on if you can realize one simple fact, things change and they change really rapidly. In today's world where any given company that used to stay on the S&P 500 for roughly 33 years is now forecast to last no more than 14 years, you have to accept that disruption is inevitable. Salmon's goal with this book is to help you understand the cycles of disruption and learn how to question your own thinking and your business model to ensure that you never get caught flat-footed. While the concept is pretty straightforward, the specifics he details in the book are really breathtaking. The book is super rich in usable information and I know I'll be reading it again, which I actually don't do very often. So when a book makes my radar while I'm reading it as something I know I'm gonna read again, you know that it's good. And I've already got this one slated to add to my must read list of books, which by the way, you can find on impacttheory.com. Impactful takeaway number one. Entrepreneurs don't sell products, they sell solutions. One thing Samet really brings home in the book through countless examples is that you cannot fall in love with your ideas. You have to be willing to pivot and destroy your assumptions so that you can reapply your energies in a way that the market will actually respond favorably to. He gave a couple of awesome examples of this, and the first was the fact that YouTube started as a dating site, I had no idea. They used videos instead of still images, which was their whole hook, but the dating site actually failed to take off, but one thing the team realized was that people actually enjoyed creating and uploading the videos. So they pivoted, renamed the site YouTube, and the rest is history. Another example was how Sony failed to capture the ebook market. Sony was actually the first to market with an ebook reader, which again, I didn't know that, but they so self-identified with being a hardware manufacturer that they just could not see the need to create an online marketplace for ebooks to accompany the reader, and thus it failed. Amazon, on the other hand, despite not being a hardware manufacturer, saw the need to marry the hardware and the ebook marketplace, and have since cornered the market. All right, impactful takeaway number two, get others invested in your success. Jay was trying to launch a product that turned music videos into puzzles, but he knew that without popular songs, the game would go absolutely nowhere. But unfortunately, he didn't know anyone in the music industry. So with some relationship capital that he'd built up in Microsoft, he was able to get a letter to Bill Gates asking him to make an introduction to David Geffen. Understanding the opportunity for David Geffen and for Microsoft, quite frankly, the game would only work on PCs and would introduce a world of music fans to music on the PC at a time when that really didn't happen. Gates made the intro to Geffen and Geffen ultimately agreed to take a meeting with Jay. In the meeting, Jay managed to get Geffen interested in his product by offering him, wait for this, 50% of the profits just for helping him get the 10 biggest acts in the music business into his puzzle game. Jay was gonna take all the risk, pay all the money up front, but he said it was a no brainer to give Geffen 50% of the profits because he'd rather have 50% of the Pacific Ocean than 100% of Lake Erie. That is a critical message and something that I find that entrepreneurs fall down on all the time is they're so concerned with owning 100% of something or as much as they can that instead of seeing how big the opportunity could be with a smaller percent, and just in terms of raw dollars equal more in their bank account, they focus more on the percentage. So great example of a time where it's better to let go of the percentage and just think about the overall size of the opportunity. All right, impactful takeaway number three, there's no such thing as running out of money. Entrepreneurs and employees alike struggle to find the budgets to get their projects and products off the ground, but what Jay makes incredibly clear is that if you can find a way to solve other people's problems with your product, you can get things done with other people's money, OPM as he calls it. He tells an awesome story of a time he was trying to market Sony's new music service, but they themselves wouldn't give him the money to do it. 
So he looked in the newspaper for companies that were in trouble, that were getting bad press, and tried to think of a way that his new music service could solve their problem. Two companies jumped out at the time, that was United Airlines and McDonald's. They were both in the midst of crazy PR problems, and he thought that a cool stunt around Sony's new music service could actually help them out. So he teamed up with them to launch a concert in the sky, where a big artist performed a concert on a United Airlines flight filled with journalists. And tied to that, he had the idea to do a promotion to give away music with the purchase of Big Macs. It ended up being a huge hit, and United and McDonald's paid for the whole thing. Sony didn't have to pay for a dime. As a bonus side note to the story, and I absolutely love this, it's probably one of my favorite parts of the book, the promotion almost didn't happen, but Jay, in true disruptive fashion, found a way to pull it off. He didn't know it, but McDonald's requires an insurance policy when doing giveaways like this, in case more people than expected redeem the free coupon. Sony's half of the insurance policy would have been three million bucks, and Jay didn't have any money for this, let alone three million bucks, but he had the foresight to realize that Sony was a big enough corporation that it can insure the policy itself instead of going through an outside agency, and he got McDonald's to cut Sony uh, their insurance division a check for half the cost of the policy. So in the end, even before the project began, Jay had already made $3 million for Sony. That, my friends, is entrepreneurial ingenuity at its finest. This book is actually freakishly full of awesome quotes. I was actually pretty surprised by just how many, and it's well worth going over to impacttheory.com for more, but I still force myself to boil it down to the three that I think are the most critical. One, yourself is nothing more than what you believe it to be. You must remove all the internal and external definitions of self that limit your progress in life. All right, you guys know my obsession with identity and what Sam makes clear in the book is that your identity, if you are not careful, will become one of the things that holds you back. Think back to the earlier example with Sony. They couldn't break free of their identity as a hardware manufacturer, and as such, they missed a huge opportunity. So always, my friends, be looking for ways to disrupt your own identity. Remember, you sell solutions, not products. All right, number two. An average idea enthusiastically embraced will go a lot farther than a genius idea no one gets. It is not enough to have a good idea. It's just not enough. You've got to be able to get people to believe in it and put their energies behind it. So don't allow yourself the out of viewing yourself as a misunderstood genius working with a horde of fools, as tempting as that might be. Instead, you have to understand, you have to understand, your success comes down to your ability to communicate to people in a way that they can understand. All right, number three. Our lives and careers are determined by our acceptance or rejection of our perceived limitations. To me, this is a fundamental building block of success. In fact, it may be the building block that I am most obsessed with getting people to understand. Only you are holding you back, and only you, my friends, can set yourself free. All right, there are so many amazing quotes and ideas in this book. Be sure to go to impacttheory.com for more quotes and all the things that have lodged themselves deep in my brain. All right. Number four, this is always my favorite part. How do I plan to use this book in my life? On this one, my friends, it is very easy. I plan to use the tips and tricks from this book to ensure that I'm able to spot and capitalize on disruptive movements in the world. Guys, technology is evolving us so rapidly. If you're not paying attention from this perspective of watching out for disruption, reinventing yourself, disrupting yourself, you're gonna get your lunch eaten by somebody who is. I wanna leave you with one last thing. And I love this quote, let this sink in. Only 13%, 13% of the world's billionaires were born into money. The vast majority of today's most successful individuals change themselves in such a way as to, all right, for the rest of that quote, you guys are gonna have to read the book and trust me, you're gonna want to hear how he finishes that sentence. All right guys, this is a weekly show, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care.